we're back. I look completely different. Who um, is this guy? Who is this guy? Um, my name is Luke, and we're What the Fanboy. I'm joined by Mr. Tyler. I am Mr. Tyler, and to my right, the Lego Builder Red Eyes. Let's go. Heck yeah. So, long story short. Too late. Oh, no, it's not too late. I'm going to be building a TIE, a tie fighter. That I got really in good. Florida. So, um, I apologize for nothing, but that's, seeing as I was, was on vacation, let's just jump right into what we did this week. <laughs> I was on vacation, which is why we didn't have a show last week, and, uh, Because so, me and Tyler are too dumb to do the show uh, by ourselves. No. We have no, no idea how to run any of this stuff. There's just some technical things that it's easier when you have someone who knows what they're doing. But uh, the long and short of it is, I didn't do much. Uh, we'll review the Mitchells vs. the Machines later. I watched that, and I've seen some of the trailers we'll talk about. Um, but I don't have much to contribute, because I sat <laughs> on a beach for most of the time. I did go to Universal. I got an awesome Jurassic World shirt and some hats. Um, one's a Jedi hat. I got that at Disney Springs. I didn't go to Universal and actual... Tyler is stealing all of my joy by building this <laughs> for me. <laughs> but. <laughs> okay. Well. Wow. Wow. <laughs> thanks. There's that. That is pure imagination right I'm, there. I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, some, struggle, the str- some struggle bus here with our stream. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's quiet. Too quiet. But for those of you who are listening, you got to enjoy this whole thing. But yeah, Universal was a ton of fun. Uh, I got to go on the new Jurassic uh, Park World roller coaster called the Velocicoaster. Um, that's a booyah of a roller coaster. It's <laughs> awesome. It's, does it go upside down? Yes. Oh, nice. Anything you can think of, it does. Catapult. Dang it, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Big high drops. Uh, it has one big high drop, and but it's and, and it's an accelerated drop. So like oh. you're accelerating as you go up, and you twist as you go down. Oh, that's awesome! Let's I'm in. Go. Yeah, I love roller coasters. Guess, Super dope. I guess we'll just have to uh, go back and check it out yeah. with you Flights, yes. for a full review. The best in our eighty dollars right now. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't get you to Orlando. Well, I'll, act, I'll be in a different <laughs> part of drive Florida here in a couple weeks. No, we took another flight down to Orlando. Oh, so. but. Yeah, so I'll be building this TIE fighter uh, while these guys do a lot, of, a lot of talking. Why don't you guys catch us up on what you did this week while I build some things? All right. This, Sounds good. This feels weird. I love this. If you don't have that TIE fighter done by the end of the show, though... Then you've failed. You're going to have to teach one of us how to run OBS. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll hold on to that guy. Wait, that's not Darth Vader. No, that's not. It's a dude. He's a that it is. That it is, Tyler. That is a dude. Um, I'll go first, I oh, guess. Don't forget his little gun. Um, well, you can't really see him, but he's sitting on my iPad. Try. I'm gonna try and be really quiet while building this. No. Good luck. I needed like a pad. Should get like a soft pad. Nah, that sounds fun. Luke, go ahead, man. You probably did like a bajillion times more things than I did. I did a lot, and I'm not even gonna talk about everything because I didn't finish things. Um. First thing I did in like two weeks ago now was I beat Uncharted 4. So I re completed the entire Uncharted franchise. Those games are incredible. Please play them. Get a PS4 and play them. They're all on PS4. And PS4s are available. And, you can and get, they're pretty cheap at this point. You can get the but collection. But I want cheap a PS5. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Nathan Drake collection is like. I don't know, ten dollars. Did they re-release those on? Are they on the like the P that PS Plus Pass thing? Four is for it. Just four. Yeah, okay. it was only PlayStation Four games. Okay, that were, were part of the PlayStation Plus thing. I'm pretty I feel sure like you're probably stealing pieces that I need, Tyler, <laughs> and that's why I'm struggling to find them. Anyway, if I don't complete this, it's Tyler's fault. This is a Mortal Kombat review, and this is it's- Raiden. <laughs> it could be Kung Lao, though, too. Could be Kung Lao. Um, okay, continuing. 
Um, one of the things that I did was I watched the Netflix series Shadow and Bone. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't know anything about the book series. I saw a trailer like two months ago, and I thought it looked fine. Then I saw I was getting good reviews, and I agreed with them. This show is fantastic. Um, I really think a lot of people will like it. It's a fantasy world that isn't like most, mainly because it's more like Victorian era. Like, the Gatling gun was just invented. Um, but then you have people using magic and airbending or shape-shifting and all this stuff. Or summoning the power of the sun. Or the power of shadow. Um, and it's it's really good. And there's no big actors in it. That was one of the kind of the things I was nervous about going into it. I didn't know if the acting would be good, but they all hold their own really well. Um, I was really impressed with their performances. The action is good. The visuals are good. I really enjoyed the story, and I enjoyed the world. Um, so I think a lot of people should check that out. I give it fanboy worthy. Um, if you like fantasy, it's the young adult vibes. It's also nice because it kind of ignores the CWisms. I mean, it's young adult, so it kind of has it every once in a while. It's but important. Yeah, it doesn't feel like you're watching a CW show, which is very nice. I watched. Oh, excuse me. I watched the first episode of it, and I thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, it's it's a really good time. Um, season two needs more Milo the goat though. That's my only request. <laughs> Milo the goat. Yes, I love that. He's an amazing character, and the that that little band of characters, um, is the best. I enjoyed all of them the most. They were so entertaining. Um, is Milo the goat with Kaz? Yeah, he's with Kaz Jesper and I can't the remember. knife thrower. Yeah, um, the assassin. Yeah. They, they, their story was awesome. I really enjoyed that. Kaz is dope. And Vesper is dope, too. Mm -hmm. um, I'll talk about that when, when you talk, I talk about, about it. it. Um, okay. I watched the first episode <laughs> of the new anime that's on Netflix. Um, the Lakeith Stanfield one. Yasuke. And that's all I watched because I didn't enjoy it that much. <laughs> Oof. Um, it's getting good reviews, I saw. Yeah, I think it's certified fresh. I'm hoping it just gets a lot better later on, or maybe in st strong, but <laughs> but it didn't I'm, start strong. I'm watching Naruto right now, so I've the this bar is a the higher bar, priority. The bar is kind of high. There. Naruto is freaking good, man. It's so intense, and the powers they have in that are so wild. <laughs> it's insane what people can think of. Um. But yeah, I'll I'll finish that show eventually once everything else is completed. Um you remember when we watched the Oscars mm -hmm. together? We did. Um Good and times. Best live action documentary came up and I made fun of it for like thirty straight minutes. Because oh, it's called the, My Octopus Yep, yeah, it's called friend? My Octopus Teacher. Teacher, that's right. I made fun of it for a good thirty minutes until the Oscars ended almost. I watched it. It's incredible. <laughs> it won for a reason. It's super good. I cried. <laughs> it was so good. Um, it's just a dude who lives in South Africa who goes out and swims in the ocean, in the kelp forest in South Africa, every day and films an octopus and becomes best friends with it. That's awesome. That's on Netflix. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's on Netflix. Highly recommend. I give that a booyah. Um, mainly because it's a nature documentary is what it is. It's an hour and a half. Um, it, will, it will pull on your heartstrings. And it has some really beautiful shots from the kelp forest. Like you see sea otters, you see sharks, see some awesome coral and crabs. And of course the octopus does some incredible things. He, he got some incredible footage. It's... It's really, really cool. Did he um, shoot it on, like, a GoPro? Uh, he had I th maybe some of it, maybe at the beginning, but you see his camera for some of it, and he has a nice He's got a water decent, decent yeah. rig for it. Mm -hmm. 
once he uh, found the octopus, he's probably like, yeah, he, uh, I could get some good equipment and film this. Lepke says he just started Naruto. Dude. Okay. <laughs> so, Lepke, I don't know how much anime you watch or not. I haven't watched a whole lot. But I just want to throw this out there to anybody who doesn't watch anime or doesn't know how to get into anime. To me, anime always, and this is one of the reasons I'm going to keep watching Yasuke, anime always starts rough. It always starts bad. I didn't like the beginning of um, Brotherhood, uh, Full Alchemist, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I remember I even told Chris, I was like, I don't know if I want to keep watching this. That's, that's a fantastic freaking show. It's incredible. It's one of my favorite shows, probably. And same with Naruto. I started and I was like, this is interesting, I guess, but it's kind of confusing. doesn't make a lot of sense, and I don't know if I really like the characters. Now I'm halfway through, and I'm just chomping at the bit to get through it. <laughs> because every episode... While the episode is 20 minutes, maybe five minutes only takes place because a lot of it is inner monologue and then thinking, this is what I have to do in this situation. Oh. And yeah, so, like, yeah. you watch five episodes and you're, like, only seen three fight moves. <laughs> and you're just gripped into it. You're like, what's going to happen? And then somebody turns into a monster and summons a giant frog and you're like, what the heck's going on? <laughs> anyway, just thought I should say that. Also watch Full Metal Alchemist. Brother. <laughs> um, I watched another nature, nature documentary. This one is on Netflix as well. It's called Life in Color. Um, it is four episodes. It's narrated by David Attenborough, the goat. <laughs> um, and it was really cool Isn't because... Sir? Yeah, Sir David Attenborough. Excuse me. My apologies. Get it right, Luke. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fiend. Um, You're something. I'm a, I'm a weird dude. No, they, they get, uh, they get special cameras because technology is a lot better now than it was just last year. And Sir David Attenborough will be like, "Hey, this flamingo or whatever does this, or this spider sits on this flower. Here's what this bee sees." What? When it comes to the flower, and you just... The, the spider blends in perfectly with it, because bees see an ultraviolet. That's awesome. So you get to see what the bee sees in ultraviolet, and there's just this spider on there, and it goes... <laughs> and kills the bee! And you're just like, you know, this makes a lot of sense. There's a part where a tiger is hunting gazelle, or deer, or whatever they're called over there, and the deer cannot see... The red filter. Tigers are orange, so they look green next to green grass. Oh, that's so that's cool. why tigers are orange. It's just, it's so cool. And so, like, they take the red filter off the camera, so you're only seeing the blue and the green filter. Mm -hmm. and the tiger just disappears, and you're like, <laughs> what the heck? It's like, and it kind of, one, I guess, criticism I would give is... Nature's amazing. Don't show the color change. Just show the shot without the red filter. And then throw it in, and then you'd see the tiger. Uh, um, so that's one editor's note I would probably make. But it's it's so cool. Um, and I love nature docs. Love it. Whew. Going through this as fast as I can. I want to watch Life in Color. That's it's sick. it's really good. The he said he thinks that you picked up the wrong piece. I absolutely have picked up the wrong piece a couple times already. <laughs> Lepke's I love that it's. I, I was gonna say I love that this is entertaining to watch too. Like. <laughs> Dude, if if people want to watch me build Lego things every week, I'll just become a Lego collector. It's fine. I'll do it for the pod. Is it just because you need an excuse? Maybe to tell I, need a, I need so a legitimate excuse to buy more Legos. That is the, any excuse is a valid excuse when a, it comes to. Legos. I have a problem. I didn't realize how much fun Legos were until you opened that pack up and I started putting things <laughs> together, and I was like. Man, I need to go buy Legos. I mean, so that's the thing. Like, I haven't. Weird sidebar here. I haven't. You know, you haven't. I haven't bought like a Lego set for myself in years. I have a box of Legos from when I was a kid that are. It's fun to go through and like just kind of build random stuff. But I don't have the instructions anymore. And 
This is just kind of therapeutic, honestly. It's- <laughs> My cousin is a huge Lego guy. He's awesome. His room is insane, and I'm super jealous. I now know why some someone would buy the Ultimate Collector's Edition of the Star Destroyer for six hundred dollars because I think he might. I he has a Millennium Falcon and it takes up like half his room. It's so huge. That's the other thing. I was like, I can't buy a big one because I can't bring it back, and I don't know where to put it. I guess I just start hanging them from the ceiling. In here, I'm down. I'm cool. We with can it. hang my X wing with it. It'd probably be just almost to scale. It probably would. <laughs> um. Okay. Continuing. Speaking of Star Wars. I watched the first two episodes of Star Wars The Bad Batch, also known as The Clone Wars Season 9. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so good to be back. I love The Clone Wars, and I love Star Wars. And the first episode of Bad Batch was incredible. I loved it. I, the characters that they all introduce are really, really good. Plus, the episode was an hour, 15, hour, 20 minutes. And so you get a really cool look into what happened to the clones after order 66. Oh my gosh. It's freaking sweet. Um, cause order 66 happens at the beginning of this episode. Um, but the bad batch is different. So they're kind of confused as to what is going on and they might have to go on the run. And I'm super excited because it's Clone <laughs> Wars season nine. Uh, the second episode, uh, was okay. It, it was. I liked what they did, but it, it was kind of a filler. The animation is incredible, dude. It looks so much better. Yeah, it's it's almost like kind of stinks when you go back to watch season one of the Clone Wars, um, because the animation is bad now. Yes. Yes, wait. Watch all of Clone Wars. The, the question was, should I... If I oh, haven't yeah. finished Clone Wars, should I watch Bad Batch? Yeah. And the answer is... No. No, finish Clone, oh. finish Clone yes. Wars yeah, and yeah, yeah. then do Bad Batch. Yeah, yep. finish Clone Wars yeah. Yeah. and watch Bad Batch. Uh, the Bad Batch is introduced in Season 8. The, yeah. Um, In the first four episodes. Seven. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Whichever one we're on now. Whatever, whatever <laughs> technically the Clone Wars, the final season was. The first four episodes are about the Bad Batch, so it's a good introduction. Plus, Clone Wars, the final season, has the best Star Wars movie in it, which is The Siege of Mandalore. So good. It's the best Star Wars movie. So good rules. Anywho, last thing I did, and this will be a good transition into Tyler's Past two weeks, me and Tyler went to the theater and we watched an American classic. We sure did. Too fast, too furious. <laughs> and it's still horrible. Yes, it's and still a bad movie. <laughs> it's so amazing at the same time. He, yes. I'm amazed at some of the things that I like in that movie where I go... That was well done. Yeah. And then not even five seconds later, it all goes out the window with terrible writing, terrible acting, bad camera work, whatever it could be. M- multiple things. That movie. So don't worry about it, cuh. <laughs> I remember I looked at you one time when, like, before a drag race, and I was like, that was a really cool shot. Yeah. And then you watch the drag race, and you're just like... Oh, it's when they all pull up to the line, and the camera goes, like, it goes through all the windows. It's a depth of field. Yeah shift so you can see each of the characters and it's it's really cool it's yep. nothing spectacular but it looked good um and then you have to watch the drag race and they hit the nos and they go a hundred miles per hour faster <laughs> <laughs> I, which isn't how it works and oh well it's okay <laughs> it's a terrible movie and i love it because yeah. i love that franchise no it, it's I, I remember at, at the end, I was like, you know, like what they were going for from a story standpoint really isn't a bad idea. It's just so poorly executed. In like every way. Yeah. Yeah. Like the idea of like infiltrating a, a drug cartel with race, like and racers. And you're, you're the getaway driver. Yeah. Like that's it's a great idea. Mm-hmm. But it just is so poorly done. I should watch Drive after I watch all these Fast and Furious movies again. 
So you can watch a good version? So I can watch realistic driving with really good acting and great characters? Well, the realistic driving comes in the next Fast Friday, which is... Yeah. Tokyo Drift, Tokyo baby. Drift, baby. I'm actually excited to go to see that with you guys. So Let's go. I have a hockey game Friday, but I might try to get out of it. Let's so go. I can go watch Tokyo Drift. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and Brett will go without you if you don't go. Yeah, so I'll, I'll use that as a jumping on point for my week, two weeks. Um, I did not do as much as Luke, but that's okay. But you and did more than me. Things are back to normal. <laughs> It just took two weeks to get there. I did more than Tyler and Brett. My hair is short. Did we even mention your haircut? Uh, I said I looked different. We were like, who is that? It looks yeah, good, Luke, though. Luke man. got a really nice haircut. It, it looks good. And thank, thank you, you uh, Logan, for commenting on my hair. His braids? Your Viking braid? My Viking braid. Yeah. I feel like you're about to kill all the Norse gods, man. <laughs> I don't, I'm not buff enough. Does it matter bro. when you yourself could be a that Greek god? like a lot of work. 5.30 tomorrow morning, let's go. Let's not. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, I'll get going. I'm going to hit the big one first. Sorry, I just realized something go before ahead. you even start. I think there are some people that have started watching this show during, during the pandemic. During the pandemic. They've yeah, yeah, yeah. only seen me with long yeah, hair, probably. Yeah. yeah. This is what I normally look like. <laughs> For the other 12 years of his life, that. this is what he's looked like. I hated long hair. <laughs> <laughs> Lefty says Tokyo Drift is my favorite movie of the franchise. Don't at me. <laughs> oh, I ain't atting you. It's it's good. <laughs> I do like Tokyo Drift a lot. I feel like I used to hate on that movie just because it's the one people hated. Because it was the one that was different. It's It's good. It's one of the best because it's different. I enjoy that movie a lot. Plus, who doesn't want to be DK? So. I've only seen it once, so I'm excited. I think it's to the one I've seen the most, it. honestly, because it's always on. I mean, who doesn't want to watch a 40 year old Luke Black to play a teenager? A high schooler? Yeah. <laughs> I think it, dude. Let's freaking go! It's almost as fun as Tobey Maguire dun, playing a high dun, schooler. Dun, 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 dun. All right, I'll jump into it. The big one: Apex Legends season nine kicked off on May the fourth. I haven't played it yet. It brought the new arenas mode. It brought the new character Valkyrie, and uh, it hit its all-time high on players, and is still going. Um, it had two hundred and eighty-nine thousand concurrent players. On, oh my gosh. On launch day, uh, it completely crashed the servers. Uh, the servers are still recovering. Like it's it's a disaster. But man, is the is the new arena mode fun? It's it's so awesome. It's a good opportunity to practice gunfights. Strategy changes, the way you use your abilities is different. Like it just makes you think about every decision you're making in a fight or when you're buying your guns. It kind of has that counter strike influence. Um so far, season nine is a booyah. I cannot wait to dig more into it. Um I've had a pretty busy few weeks last week and even this week, so I probably won't get to spend too much time with it for a while, but I've really enjoyed it. Uh the next game I played, I'm gonna stay in game world before I get to movies. Uh, I played Resident Evil 7. About an hour and a half in. It is horrifying. I'm playing it because I want to play Resident Evil Village. Really bad. Um, <laughs> we watched the first 15 minutes here. I watched the first 15 minutes of Resident Evil 7 with Brett and Luke before the show started. Um, I Brett mean, and I handled it pretty fine. I mean, I knew where all the jump scares were, but uh, Luke, Luke did not handle it so well. I may have said some choice words. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Don't be surprised if a gif of that shows up somewhere. Was it recording at that I point? may have hit the no! record button. <laughs> no! No! Yes! Ugh. I'm sorry, Mom. <laughs> Give the people what they oh, want. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, Resident it's Evil glorious. 7. Uh, it's glorious. Graphics are good. The, the gameplay is good um, for, for what it's going for. It was, it's a ton of fun. Um... And then the final gaming thing I did, I don't know if this was before Brett left, but I finished Spider-Man Miles Morales on PlayStation 4. Um, I did not feel like waiting for a PS5 to play this game. I've been really chomping at the bit. Um, I'll give it a fanboy worthy, just because I think some pacing in the story at the end kind of just launched itself forward. Um, but all in all, it's a really good game, and I highly recommend it if you are into superheroes in general or have played the previous spider-man game um it's, it's a ton of fun 
And Miles, the characterization of Miles to me is so much better than Peter in those two games. Um, he just has so much more personality, which is really weird to say because Peter has a ton of personality. But Miles is just awesome. I I can't wait to dive more into it. Play the it, It'll probably be the first game I play a New Game Plus on. Um, Dude, I love New Game Pluses. It's just, I've never done it, one. Two, the game is really digestible because it's really short. I think it's just like the perfect chance to do mm. that. Um, but to go with that, I also read the Spider-Man Miles Morales Wings of Fury prequel novel that Titan Books published for the game. Um, and that is strange. <laughs> I will give that a, a Matthew McConaughey. Um, it's about Spider-Man, both Spider-Man, fighting Vulture, who has escaped from prison and is turning people into... Literal humanoid birds. Nice. <laughs> it's really strange. <laughs> um, but Miles is cool. They really do a good job of tapping into his uh, his roots. Um, being that he's Hispanic, um, they write some passages in Spanish and stuff. It's really cool. Um, but while well, I'm on the topic of Spanish and, and Latin America, I got to go see a pre-screening of the movie that I think a lot of people are pretty excited You're about. You're doing so good at segues, man. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you take. I'm gonna let you take over. I'm on a roll. Now. I'm just so jealous of what you saw. Yeah. So, Regal, Ooh. when it bought the Warren, I remember we were all kind of sad, but it's kind of brought some cool things to Wichita. Mm-hmm. This is true. And uh, I, I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> One of those things is pre like early screenings of movies, and I got to see In the Heights. On, on Mother's Day this year. My mom is on the East Coast. Dana's mom's on the West Coast right now. I was like, well, I don't got anything going on. I'm going to go watch In the Heights, I guess. So I, I pulled up the tickets, and there was one ticket left. And I was like, well, I guess that I'm going by myself. <laughs> so I went and saw In the Heights. Uh, Sorry, it's, Dana. <laughs> it's a musical from Lin-Manuel Miranda. It came out on Broadway. It was like 12, 13 years ago um, prior to Hamilton. This was the last thing he did leading into Hamilton. Um it's a it's a story about chasing your dreams as an immigrant in the United States. Um, he's a second generation uh, Dominican kid who his parents came here. They've both passed away since, and his dream is to go back to the Dominican Republic and restore the bar uh, that his dad owned. And it was oh, that's really it cool. Was, it was damaged in like a hurricane or something in the Dominican Republic. They don't really say exactly what it is. Um, but it's a musical. If you like Hamilton, it's it's very similar. Um, it has a lot more Latin influence, which I, I don't talk about it a lot on this podcast, but I love Latin music. Like I seriously enjoy it so much, and this was just a ton of fun. It's, it's a booyah. I won't go deep into it because we are going to review that on the show when it comes out. Um, I, it's just getting me more hyped for it, yeah, man. The, the last thing I'll leave you with two things my favorite song is a song called uh, about carnival which was really really good it's in the trailer the song's not but the scene is it's a really cool scene um anthony ramos ramos okay i don't know why i said but anthony ramos um i've listened to the broadway version of all the songs and i've listened to the movie version obviously and i actually like him more than lin-manuel miranda a lot like Mm. a lot more um the songs are also updated for now, so that probably helps too. Um, and there was a couple next to me during the movie, <laughs> and I probably I either ruined their night or made their night, because uh, at the end I was bawling my eyes out and being being kind of loud about it. I wasn't trying to, but uh, no, you weren't hiding it. It's a yeah, it's it's a very heartwarming story about realizing your dreams and. Um, you know, not always, not always seeing your dreams for what they are. Mm. Maybe they're not what you think they are, and it just takes a moment for that to set in. Um, it's it's incredible. Luke asked me if I thought it was better than Hamilton. I don't know. I I don't know because this is a movie. Hamilton's a play. Yeah, it's really hard for me to say, but I think I like the music more in In the Heights. So. There's that. Um, Recency bias? No, because I've been listening. 
leading up to In the Heights, I listened to Hamilton like front to back. Okay. I think six times. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Yeah. So I like it's good. Hamilton's great. In the Heights is also great. I think there's there's moments. We'll talk more about In the Heights June eleventh, the week of when it comes out. Let's um, go. It's if if you get a chance to see it early, or if you get a chance when it comes out, please go see it. It's really good. It's a it's a very culturally influenced film slash musical. And uh, John Chu, who is also going to be doing Wicked, it's in good hands. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in good hands. Um, and then the last thing I did, and I don't know if we can all talk about this one, but I watched Without Remorse, uh, the Amazon Prime Tom Clancy movie uh, starring Michael B. Jordan. Um... We watched that, and that was, I think, the day after our last episode that week. Oh, yeah. It came out, remember. I think, on April 30th or something. Yeah. It's, it's been a little bit. Um, yeah, we, we, all, we all watched that. Did you watch that? No, I have okay. not. Luke just, and I watched that. Us. Luke and I actually did things for the pod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm providing content right now <laughs> by building... Here, let's let's get a little. Oh, let's see. The, this is called social media engagement. I'm pretty sure my face is pretty dumb in that picture, so don't take another one. <laughs> uh, Logan, I, you said can't wait. If you want to listen to any of the songs prior, listen to ninety six thousand. Don't listen to In the Heights because In the Heights is the opening act, and it's freaking awesome when you get to see it. I'm not listening to anything. I'm going in blind. It's really, it was really hard sitting upstairs for me to not turn it on and start listening to it because <laughs> I've been listening to it nonstop. It's, it's great. Um, but yeah, we watched Without Remorse, Michael B. Jordan. Um, I kind of have some remorse watching this. <laughs> Talk about it. <laughs> what kind of remorse are you? Um, well, Tom Clancy action revenge movie, and it's pretty boring. There's not good acting in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it needed, and it didn't do either. So So I loosely disagree. I'm gonna make noise. There I are here. Gotta get so, these gotta get these next this next bag open. Okay. So Michael Continue. B. Jordan, I would say, is good in half of this. And then halfway through making the movie, he was like well, I signed up for a stinker, so I'm probably not going to try anymore. Mm. And they stopped, he stopped trying. Cause there's, That's unfortunate. Like, there's one action scene where I feel like he's doing pretty good, and the scenes where like his he finds his wife or goes back to where his wife died, I feel like he's putting in a good performance. But then the rest, he's just like, yeah, I got to go find this bad person. Hey, where's the bad guy? Feels like it's just so dry and boring. There's no emotion through like any of the movie. I was so bored. That's unfortunate. The action. There's one good action scene, and it's like ten seconds long. Is that the house one? No, it's the prison riot. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. He wraps himself up in his in his shirt, and he starts beating down prison guards, and it's done. I like the scene in the house too. Um... I think the weapon. the scene in the house for me would, and um, I think you liked it more than me, so I'll shut up here soon so we can be a little more positive. <laughs> um, I think it was really, and a lot of the movie is just badly shot. It's dark, can't see a whole lot. The illumination only shows up if there's like a muzzle flash, which is like, what, three frames maybe? One yeah. Frame. Those are and it's just really quick, and I feel like, last. like especially in the house scene, and also on the scene on top of the building, which is where I feel like his performance was okay during an action scene. I feel like he just can't see stuff. And it's it's okay, but they're all wearing black in a black room with smoke and bullets whizzing by, and it's just like it sounds like it was. I, a, I don't care. There was anymore, an attempt like, at being pretty like stylized, but maybe yeah. didn't hit the mark for you. Tyler, did, did that work for you? The, I'll say my my rating is a Matthew McConaughey. I, I think it's it's all right. Yeah. Um. I I did enjoy it. I I have a man crush on Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> Just, let me get my bias out there. There you go. Um. 
I think there are moments where Michael B. Jordan, like Luke said, is like all in and he's absolutely crushing it. Um, and then there's scenes where you just kind of feel like it falls flat. Um, I do agree it is a pretty dark movie in terms of color palette, so it is kind of hard to see things. However, I think that color palette helps in probably my favorite scene in the entire movie when they break in and try to kill him. Um, there, there's just some really cool ideas that I guess I never really would have thought of, um, but it kind of speaks more to the kind of Navy SEAL he was, I guess, mm. more than like the movie itself. Um, but I, I think there's something to enjoy here for sure. Lepke mentions the car scene when he lights the car on fire and jumps in the back. The best car scene in the movie and the best scene in the movie is when the dude takes out the garbage. Yeah, that it, scene's pretty wild. It, I did not see that coming. That rocked me. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Lepke's thing says, the car scene was pretty dope, even if it might have been a little out of place. I would agree with that. It does kind mm. of feel like it's tacked on to be a cool set piece, more so than it fits the narrative of the movie. That being said, I did think that was super cool because I've not seen that before in a movie. Sometimes you, you get an idea for a set piece and, and you, you just have to you get it in. Build, you build the thing to get there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's, a, it's a cool scene for sure. Um, but yeah, you know, I think the movie falls to Matthew McConaughey for me because you look at the cast and you're like, there's no way this movie shouldn't knock it out of the park. Yeah. You look at the cast. You look at the money that's going to be behind it. You look at the writer. I was going to say you look at the writer. Who wrote it? Taylor Sheridan. Oh. And Guaranteed, then, I put money on this. I put a lot of money on this. Somebody went to him and said, hey, do you want to write this movie? And he was like, yeah, sure. And he wrote it, and then they used none of it. Uh, they used his name. Yeah. They probably simplified it a lot. Because all of his movies that I've seen by Taylor Sheridan are nothing like what was made. They're, they're well, slow. And anything anything Character with driven. a... Like, I can see They're the fact Westerns. that it's a Tom Clancy, mm-hmm. like, brand. There may have been, like, so much oversight that, yeah, like, there was maybe an initial draft. Like, and most of that was, but like, how do I want to say this? The the general idea that the script's bones were still enough there that they have to credit him. But yeah. the rewrites were... Big enough that it doesn't really feel like it yeah. anymore. Like like when they're on the plane right before he gets shot down. Mm. I bet there was a conversation on that plane, and they just took it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's you know it's it's all right. It's an all right movie. It's fine. I I'd watch it again if they make a sequel. I might watch the sequel. I don't know. I like I'll Michael watch the, Jordan. I'll, I'll watch, watch the, the Rainbow sequel. movie. I was gonna say I watched the sequel because that post credit scene was actually really cool. I I give it a straight to streaming though. I was, it's right where it needs to be. Then, <laughs> that's right. It's free. And Amazon on, Prime. Free on Prime, baby. Yeah. Find it for free. Borrow somebody's account. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs>